Hi, this is a short preview of how new components will work in, in the next version of PineGrow, which should be out soon. So here we have project, and it's a simple project. Uh, for now we have two pages, and we will use the first page to define our components, and the second page to actually display the components. Um, we could have like multiple pages where we will use the components, not just one. And also we can have components defined and used on the same page. But I think this is more clear to understand. Okay, so let's say we are building a team section on our website, so we need a component for a team member. So let's just go here to the first page and let's take a column and maybe this is enough for start. This will be the name of the team member and this will be the description. Okay, so now let's select the column. The whole column will be our component. And then here, and, and we'll rename the, the tab to something more user, meaningful. So now here we have components, and we have four actions that I will explain. So the first one, define component, will define a new component. So it needs a unique ID. Let's call it demo team member. Okay, and that's um, all. So now let's update components in our project. And if we go to lib panel, we see that our team member component is now listed here. So now we can just take it and place it on our web page. And let's make three team members. So let's duplicate it. And we can start using it. John. But here we have a problem. So what if we change the component definition? So let's say, okay, we, we need to use heading 2. And if I go and update components, you see all the changes we did here are overwritten. So before I, I wrote John, and now this is again name. So what we can do? We can select name and, uh, where component is defined and then we use protect element action. Needs a name or ID, so let's call it a name. And we just leave it on by default. And by default, this action will protect the content of this element. So now if I go Reload and update. Now here I wrote my John Ryan Peter. And if I update components, you see our names are intact. So that means that now we can do changes to our component. Let's increase the heading without losing the actual content of the component which are already placed on the page. Of course we also need to protect the description so we would just again select the paragraph say protect element give it a name, 
and description. Then update components. And then we can go here and we can see the text. We can just go ahead and edit the text. And if we do a change here, maybe change color. See, color changed, but the content stayed. Let's see, I go back, this doesn't look nice. Okay, so what what else can we do? It would be great if our team component, team member component, also has an image of the person. Let's go here and put an image into our component definition. Here it is. And we load an update. Okay, now we go in and now we can use the our project browser. So I selected the image and so here I have pictures. I'll just right click and say set source and the image is here. But again, we have the problem. If I update component, this change made here gets overwritten by um, component definition. So what we do, select the image, and then we will use protect element again. But this time we will protect attributes. So in this case, we'll protect source attribute, because this tells the actual image that will be displayed. Right? Okay, so let's go and update components. Now let's fill in our pictures. And if we update components, our picture stays the same. So let's say now we want to change this picture. So let's take out the size and make it responsive. So I, I just made the change here at the component definition. And I'll just update components. And it was changed everywhere. So what else could we do? Let's say we we want to um, select one of these components, one of the team members, and say it's active. Like this could be a menu or, or something like that. So we have a class, active, it's blue. And again, we have the same problem. If I now go and update the component, this class is gone. So what we can do, again, we go to the element to which the custom class will be assigned. In this case, it's, it's the column, the whole component. And we add protect element. And let's give it a name. It can be anything. Let's call it team member. And in this case, we will protect specific classes, active, and we will not protect the whole content. Otherwise, like if we make changes in, in add something to the component, it would not um, be applied to these components. So 
on the top level column, we just want to protect this class. So that's why we disabled protecting the content. Okay, let's go and reload an update. Now let's make Barbara active. And update the components. And our class is still there. So one more thing we can do with components. So let's say we want to list like the last projects of each team member. So let's add a heading. Let's call it recent projects. Let's add a paragraph. Let's, this will be the list of projects, so let's just write a project. What will it be? Gmail redesign, for example. Now if I go and update, so all of them got this new content, but kind of doesn't make sense to hard code this into the component, right? So now if we go here and write something, it will be overwritten if we just use protect element, um, then we have a problem because if we want to have the option to list more than one project. So what we do is, here we will add protect element and we'll call it project. And then we'll also add repeat element. We can use the same ID. So here we tell PineGrow that this element can be repeated in component on the page as many times as necessary and that its content should also be protected. So let's uh, update components and now we can, for John, let's add three projects. It's bigger. So the first one will be X and top secret project and another project. Very good names. Okay. Now if I go and update components, you see the projects are here. And if I change the way projects are done at component definition, let's say it would be better to display this in a list, right? So let's make well, and then this should be list item. Well, Now refresh components, and you see, we have list here as well. So this is quite, uh, I think, useful features for our components. So it's not just simple uh, hard coding a piece of code and then reusing it on other pages, but you can actually separate what part will be defined by the component and what part, what content, what attributes, what classes will be all kind of specified at the place where you use this component on the page. And 
also here we have like the project overview so when you say update components this does two things it goes through all files in the project and it finds all the components that are defined there and it also updates all the places where components are used it updates them with uh, with new definitions of components so this is even if it's big project this is very easy and quick to manage okay so much for now and we hope to release this uh, pingro 2.3 uh, soon let's say next week that's our target <laughs> so don't uh, don't hold my word for it but we'll do our best to get it out as soon as possible have a nice day